Almost two decades have passed since we first set foot in Cyrodiil and began exploring the many aspects of the world that has made Oblivion a cult classic, and for many of us, our favorite Elder Scrolls game in the franchise. To this day, we find little things to focus in on, details that we may have overlooked after countless playthroughs. It could be because it was something that we just took for granted as it has to be there, or it simply had no effect or significance on our gameplay and so it went unnoticed. On this channel, I want to look for the significance in the insignificant, and today I have come up with an overview of all of the crests and the banners of the cities of Cyrodiil. Before we get started, my name is Angelica. I am a huge fan of The Elder Scrolls, the physical ones, great read, highly recommend. Also, thank you guys for, at the time of recording this, 1.8k subscribers. I am humbled by all of your support, thank you so much, and I'm glad that you're enjoying the content. Now, a lot of these are going to be pretty obvious, but I will try my best to not just show you each crest and what it represents, but also give you a little bit of background and lore where available. I will just preface this by saying that there isn't a whole lot of lore to explore with these. I wish there was more in some cases, but that will become more obvious as we move on with this video. Now, I thought it would make most sense if we did this in alphabetical order, so let's start with the crest of Anvil. When I began my research and note-taking process for this video, I probably spent the most amount of time trying to figure out what Anvil is supposed to represent. I'll be honest, if you'd asked me beforehand what that is, I wouldn't even try to guess, I straight up just don't know. After staring at it for a while, I thought it kind of looks like the Fleur de Lis, which is the heraldic symbol of the royal family of France. When you look into it, besides representing the royal family, it also shows things such as the French cultural heritage, Christianity, light, but that didn't fully make sense for me in the context of Anvil, especially considering how obvious some of the other crests are. Surely this wouldn't be that obscure. I then decided to see what others in the community had to say about it, and the only comment relating to Anvil that I could find was from a user on Reddit saying that these were the tracks of a Martin or a Stoat. Now, I live in Ireland. I've seen Stoats, I know what their feet look like. That's not it. That didn't make any sense to me. So I decided to disregard that particular theory, and I took a walk around Anvil to see if somehow it would come together for me that way. I walked around the city and I read the guide to Anvil, which told me nothing about the crest but a lot about the author, and I even went to the castle to see if perhaps this symbol is in any way expanded upon there. I found nothing. At that point, it occurred to me that whenever Anvil is mentioned by NPCs, they often reference the fact that it is a coastal city. So perhaps we are looking for something related to the sea and the coast? I walked around the coast from the port to the lighthouse until what I'd been looking for all along revealed itself to me. Seagulls. The crest is meant to represent seagull tracks in the sand. Here's an image for reference, as you can see they have webbed feet, looks a lot like this crest, and you know, makes a lot more sense than a stoat. Also, I'm definitely seeing the track pattern here. A detail that I noticed when it comes to the anvil guards, their armor is the only one that has the pattern repeated over the entire surcoat. As you will later see with the other guards from the other cities, the crest will usually just be in the middle of the chest. Now, let's move on to everybody's favorite city, Reville. Unfortunately, other than the fact that their crest is obviously a stag, there is little else to be said about the crest. It seems that all of the cities have a crest that is somewhat specific to them or something that their city is known for, and I guess they decided to go for the safe option, you know, they are somewhat remotely located, there is a lot of nature around Breville, and stags are a common sight. It was either that or a Khajiit with dilated pupils, and I don't think Breville needs any more smoke. They've got it bad as it is. Next we have Bruma with their beautiful hawk crest. This is more than likely a reference to one of the chief deities of the Nordic pantheon, Kine. Bruma is of course a city located close to the border of Skyrim, and so the crest makes sense with the high Nord population. Just for a little bit of background if you're not aware, Kine is worshipped by the Nords, and she is also known as Mother of Nords. It is believed that she is the one that taught the Nords the power of wielding the Thu. When it comes to symbols, she is associated with a hawk, with the ancient Nords having called her Sister Hawk. Just if you're interested, birds actually have a big place in Norse mythology, uh, speaking about the real world, and there is a lot of symbolism to explore there, but for example, hawks specifically are associated with the goddess Freya, who could transform into a hawk, or a falcon, according to some iteration. 
Let's look at Tatenhall. At first glance, it's not really obvious what their crest represents, but once you've made your way through closing an oblivion gate outside of the city, you meet Count Andal Indars, whose son, Farwell, is the founder of the Knights of the Thorn. Going back to the crest, this thorny symbol is one directly associated with the Indars family. You will later see a ring with this sigil and an amulet as well. Both father and son are notorious local party boys, and the Knights of the Thorn, that is meant to be there to protect Chadenhall and its people, have gained a reputation as drone cards. The guards don't even rely on them anymore. Anytime something bad happens, Knights of the Thorn are nowhere to be found. This particular crest goes over the whole chest of the Chaden Hall surcoat, uh, so this is a little bit different to the rest of the crest as well. It's quite unique looking, but unfortunately, the family that this crest belongs to, well, it is subject to ridicule. Another detail that you may not have considered is that the Knights of the Thorn is actually a faction that the player can join. Once you've shut the Oblivion Gate, if Farwell survives, he will make you a member of the Knightly Order. However, if he does not survive, his father, Andal, can do the same. As far as factions go, you can't really rank up in here, and you might not want to mention this around the city too much, considering the reputation of this particular Knightly Order has gained. The Coral City Crest is one that I always thought was pretty obvious, and of course it depicts the huge old oak tree in the middle of the city. I was excited for this one, and I was hoping to get a good bit of lore out of it. It sort of reminded me of the White Tree of Gondor, so I figured there must be more to it, like surely something that iconic has a good bit of lore around it. The only thing I could find is that in the past, merchants would come to Coral and sell their merchandise under the shade of the tree. I wanted to know more, there's gotta be more. I then came across a Reddit thread where user Nick Rhodes was responding to a post of somebody else searching for the deeper meaning behind the tree, and he says, not everything has to be some magic shit, it's probably just an old tree. And you know what, Nick? I felt attacked. But he's right, you know, sometimes things are the way that they are, be because they are. Moving forward, the city of Kavach is unfortunately destroyed by the time we, the player, get to it. Once we arrive, an oblivion gate will stand before the city, and the citizens are camping down the hill outside of it. Kavach, however, does have a city crest, and it is the black head of a wolf. This is in reference to Carolus Aquilarius, who was the Count of Kavach in the Second Era. I do hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Now, I just want to preface this by saying that uh, we're getting into ESO lore, or lore that was expanded on in ESO. I know that the community has mixed feelings about this, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it anyway, because I do think it is kind of a cool backstory for Kavach. So when Carolus is uncle, Varen Aquilarius declared open rebellion against the Emperor, Carolus was sent to defend Kvat. He rallied forces to defend Kvat on the field against the Imperial soldiers sent from Anvil. Carolus successfully repelled the attack, dealt a huge blow to the Imperial army, and then did it again, three more times. I know. Kvat was impenetrable under the command of Carolus. This man was not about to become the disappointing nephew. For his bravery and prowess in battle, he was named the Wolf of Kvat, and soon after he became the Count of Kvat. This whole ordeal is referenced in the Wolf and the Dragon book that, again, is actually found in the Elder Scrolls Online. There is a bit more to it, but I think that that might be a story for a different video. Up next we have the city of Leowin. The crest features a magnificent white stallion, which is in reference to the chivalrous order known as the Knights of the White Stallion, who the Count of Leowin has chartered for the protection of the city. We are properly introduced to this order through a quest involving an orc named Mazoga, who is eager to join the knightly order. I like Mazoga, she really gives me Brienne of Tarth vibes, and she's also very serious with her intentions to become a knight, although she may not fully understand what that is. You begin this quest by speaking to the Count, and then you, alongside Mazoga, must defeat Black Burgo and his gang of bandits. Once this is finished, you will return to the city, and the Count will name you and Mazoga Knight Errants. Once again, this isn't a faction that you can rank up in, it is just another fancy title to add to an already extensive list of fancy titles. We're now looking at my favorite city crest, and that is Skingrad. For me, this crest always stood out above the others. It is a blood red color featuring what looks like two moons, and I would assume they are to represent Master and Secunda. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this particular crest, because for me personally, I thought it was quite obvious that, you know, because the Count of Skingrad, Janus Hasseldor, is a vampire, that is what it looks like. The red and black color scheme is one thing, but the fact that it specifically shows moons is what ties it into vampirism for me. There is something in our real world known as the lunar lunacy effect, and dating back to the medieval times, this was associated with humans taking form of werewolves and vampires. Now, although there are no werewolves in Oblivion, I do think that the red moon kind of is a bit of a callback to her scene in the blood moon. 
this is a long shot. When I was looking into what the community had to say about Skingard's crest, I found that somebody suggested that the moons are to represent the Khajiiti pantheon, and the reason that they gave was that Skingrad is so close to the Elsweary border that it must be that. I kind of get it, but to be honest, I would disregard that theory altogether, because one, the Count isn't a Khajiit, and two, there isn't a single Khajiit resident in all of Skingrad. I looked, I went around the city, I checked the wiki, there's nothing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe Khajiit have ever resided in Skingrad, or at least, you know, during the point at which Oblivion takes place. Now, for arguably the most iconic crest, the Imperial City. The Imperial Crest shows a likeness of Akatosh, the Dragon God. The lore behind this dates all the way back to the First Era, when a Nedic slave woman named Alicia prayed to Akatosh for liberation from her Daedra-worshipping, cruel, alien masters. She received three visions from the Dragon God and led her people in rebellion against the alien masters. Years of fighting ensued, and after putting an end to alien rule and taking the White Gold Tower, Alicia founded the First Empire of Tamriel. At the time, the faith in Tamriel took up many diverse forms, the Aeliot Pantheon and the Nord Pantheon were quite different in that they revered different gods. The initial intention was to completely abolish all Aeliot religious practices and their gods, however in the interest of keeping the peace and coming to a reasonable compromise, because at that point all the people had ever known was what the Aeliot gods were, Alicia decided to merge the Nordic pantheon with the Aeliot gods. The most notable things here are that they kept Akatosh, they brought Dibella in from the Nordic pantheon, and Kain was recreated as Kinnereth. Additionally, Lorcan was completely ignored. This then became the most prominent religion in all of Tamriel. As Alicia lay on her deathbed, she was visited by Akatosh and he canonized her, binding her soul to the stone in the center of the Amulet of King. She was thereafter known as Saint Alicia, and Akatosh's covenant was formed with men to shield Tamriel from the forces of oblivion. And as you can see, this is why the dragon is such a key symbol in the history of the Empire. And this concludes the city crests from the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion video. I came up with this idea as I was gathering footage for my clothing in Oblivion video. You know, since we were on the topic of bright colors, I was sort of hyper aware of my environment and the banners stood out to me in a way that they hadn't before. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are your favorite crests or crest? And is there anything that I missed in terms of the history, the lore, the references? Once again, thank you all so much for the overwhelming support in my first videos. I really appreciate all of your comments and all of your feedback. Stay Stay tuned because the next video is going to be related to Morrowind and I'm sure most of you can already guess what it's going to be about. But for now, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Be seeing you. Bye!